if you talk about literary movements then no other literary movement got so much attention if we compare to university wits almost five to six times this particular group of writers university wits have already been asked in UG Senate examination sometimes they ask the writers the dramatists the playwrights associated with this particular group and sometimes they ask that who coined this term university wits so it was George Sainsbury who first coined this particular term uh, university wits for calling the Elizabethan playwrights, for calling the Elizabethan dramatists as the group of writers who studied from Cambridge or Oxford University. So you see these dramatists were from Elizabethan age and it was after 300 or 400 years that George Sainsbury coined this term. He made the list of writers who must be included in this particular term university wits. Many students think that uh, there was a particular group of writers, the particular group of playwrights who used to sit together and write the dramas. But it is not so. It is not a musical uh, band. It is not a musical band where a group of musicians come together and create music. Writing is a solitary task. It cannot be done in a group. It cannot be done in collaboration. Yes, some writers do in collaboration, but most of the writers choose solitary, choose solitude. There is so much disputes, disagreements when you work with another writer. You have different opinions, the another writer has different opinions. So it is always a kind of disagreements are always there when we do work in collaboration. So most of the time writers choose to work alone. Yes, exceptions are always there that a few group of writers come together and uh, work on a particular project. For instance, King James Bible. King James Bible was uh, written by a lot of uh, scholars came together and uh, began working on King James Bible. So it is just an exception but most of the time writers work, dramatists work alone and writing while writing their works. Okay so it was George Sainsbury who coined university wits for the writers, for the playwrights, for the dramatists who passed from Oxford and Cambridge University and which includes Christopher Marlowe, Robert Greene, Thomas Nash who studied from Cambridge University and then we have John Lilly, Thomas Lodge and George Pile who studied from Oxford. Yes, you can add another name into this list of university wits. Uh, yes, although he has never taken, he had never been to any Oxford or any other university. Uh, but when we talk about university wits, when we talk about the good writers, the good dramatists who were uh, trying with different kind of writing styles, then Thomas Kidd is also included in this type of university wits. All right, so in this video, we are going to discuss some important points, some important works of university wits which you should remember while you are preparing for your competitive exams. So before we continue our discussion, if you are one of those students who are preparing for competitive exams like UGC net or GATE exam in English literature, then you can simply check out our study material from our official website limitlessliterature.com. You can check the link in the description below to know more about our study material. Now without any further delay, let's continue our discussion on university wits. So as I just mentioned that all these dramatists were passed from Cambridge and Oxford University. Uh, one of the very popular dramatists from this list is Christopher Marlowe who came from uh, Cambridge University and um, he was very much popular for using blank blank words in the best possible way. Yes, blank words was first introduced in drama in the play Gorboduck written by Thomas Norton and Sackville. But it was later, it was Christopher Marlowe who used blank words in the best possible way. Even Ben Johnson went on to praise uh, Christopher Marlowe for using blank words. He called this blank verse as his mighty line. So Marlowe's mighty line is the blank verse. So this was a question in UGC net examination that which play introduced blank verse. So it was Gorboduck by Thomas Norton and Sackville. And it was Ben Johnson who said it blank verse is the Marlowe's mighty line. Marlowe's weapon that he uses to create incredible works in English language. So you might have read his a lot of works like Dr. Faustus and G of Malta and which was written in blank words. So uh, Christopher Marlowe was famous for this particular writing style and this particular writing style blank words is nothing but unrhymed poetry 
with the use of iambic pentameter actually what happens is that whenever a writer has to write big works for instance uh, when john milton sat on to write 10000 lines in paradise lost he was uh, it was it is a little difficult for a writer it is a difficult for a poet for a dramatist to come up with rhyme schemes to come up with the rhyming words so instead of using rhyming words uh, what they do is they put uh, the stressed and unstressed syllables to create the same musical effect that one gets from rhyme schemes it is not possible to write big works in rhyme scheme in uh, rhyming words so that's why people that's why writers use uh, iambic pentameter making uh, the syllables set in a particular order so they can create musical effect so blank words introduced by gorbodox thomas norton and sackville and later on uh, christopher marlow shakespeare yes shakespeare has written all of his works in blank words and most successful works in black blank words and then john milton went on to flourish this particular uh, meter this particular uh, you can say device that one writes one uses in writing the poetry university bids for the writers who approach different style of writing different genres for instance christopher marlow used to write tragedies and then we have john lilies uh, you fused anatomy of wit and then we have thomas kidd's spanish tragedy so all these dramatists uh, were uh, coming up with different kind of writing style different genres and creating the best works in english language a lot of researchers believe that shakespeare used to take the material from university wits and that's one of the reason why robert green called shakespeare upstart grow in his work grows worth of wit so according to him shakespeare grew to the popularity just because he was stealing the material like a crow and gaining the fortune of others towards himself so robert green was so much disappointed uh, with shakespeare and that's why he attacked uh, in his pamphlet grots worth of wit to some extent it is also a truth that shakespeare used to take the material from others for instance uh, his hamlet is in depth of uh, the spanish tragedy written by thomas kidd or you can say his work the merchant of venice is taken from uh, this uh, christopher marlowe's jew of malta yes we have elements of merchant of venice into this jew of malta and then another work which is shakespeare's henry the 6th which is uh, we can say that maximum contribution is done by thomas nash yes we can say that this particular work shakespeare's henry the 6th has maximum contribution of thomas nash or you can say uh, titus andronicus which we uh, read in shakespeare uh, the researchers found that researchers think that researchers believe that uh, this work titus andronicus is a work written by george pile and then shakespeare consistently relied on other sources like holinshed's chronicles or plutarch's lives or boccaccio's decameron so that's why robert green also attacked shakespeare calling him upstart crow so he was also jealous that uh, taking the material of other shakespeare was gaining the fortune shakespeare is doing business shakespeare is growing rich and uh, day after day and that is why robert green attacked him from competitive examination point of view christopher marlowe is one of the main one of the important writers the one of the important dramatists that you should study in detail you should study all his work like dr faustus the jew of malta etc and uh, for other university wits if you study if you remember the titles alone that will do the work so the works like thomas nash unfortunate traveler john lilies you fuse the anatomy of wit thomas kidd's the spanish tragedy so on and so forth so try to remember all these points try to remember the works associated with the university wits try to remember the list of all the university wits because they ask question from uh, the writers the playwrights associated with university wits and from last 5 to 6 times they have asked uh, these type of questions uh, from this particular topic so this is what we all have to discuss in this particular video i hope you found the video worth your time uh, that's it for this video thank you